They're both flipping massive, they're both very much not cheap, but which one is best for you? The Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra or Google's Pixel 7 Pro? Now the Galaxy S23 Ultra will cost you anywhere from 1,249 quid to 1,599 depending on the storage and memory you want stuffed inside. Although Samsung is at least offering a pre-order discount as well as various trade-in deals to soften that particular crotch kick. In comparison, the Pixel 7 Pro almost seems as cheap as soggy chips. Although the regular asking price of 849 pounds isn't exactly affordable, this megapixel has already dropped in price since launch and Google offers various generous trade-in cashback good times. So here's my full Pixel 7 Pro versus Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra comparison, discussing the various features, gaming, battery life, camera tech, all that good stuff. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. So here we have them side by side, Galaxy S23 Ultra on the left, Pixel 7 Pro on the right. And even though this is a pair of enormous Android blowers, 6.8 inches versus 6.7 inches, they are quite easy to tell apart because the Galaxy S23 Ultra sports a more rectangular finish. Whereas here on Google's Pixel, you do have those more rounded corners, which do feel a bit nicer in the hand. And your uncle's spurt is all about the hand feel. The good news, however, is that Samsung has definitely reined in the screen curviness when it comes to the S23 Ultra compared with previous generations. So now the display, just like the Pixel 7 Pro, only ever so subtly curves at the edges there. And I certainly have no bother whatsoever with either of these smartphones when it comes to palm intrusion when I'm clutching them tight. Apart from the curvy corners and the fact that the Galaxy S23 Ultra is a Nats pube bigger than the Pixel, they're very similar indeed. They've both got a selfie cam orifice centrally positioned up at the top here. However, there is one more invisible difference, and that's the fact you've got the original Gorilla Glass Victus protecting the screen here on the Pixel 7 Pro. That's been upgraded to fresh new Gorilla Glass Victus 2 here on the S23 Ultra. Now certainly the original Victus I've found does tend to scratch up rather easily. Victus 2, it's supposed to be more shatter resistant and at least as scratch resistant. So far no scratches here on the S23 Ultra, but either way I would recommend slapping a screen protector on because these buggers aren't cheap. Both phones sport an aluminium frame and then if we flip around to the back it is once again Victus 1 and Victus 2 protecting that arse. But even though they're both constructed from glass, it is a very different design. You get a glossy, shiny finish here on the Pixel 7 Pro, which unfortunately does tend to get quite smudgy. Whereas it is a matte finish here on the Galaxy S23 Ultra, which is highly resistant to grime and greasy prints. However, personally, I do prefer the camera bump here on the Pixel 7 Pro, which looks a bit smarter, even though it has scratched up quite a lot under heavy duress. And you've got a small selection of colours with both phones. The Pixel 7 Pro comes in black, white or hazel. I personally prefer the white model. And the S23 Ultra you can grab in phantom black, cream, green and lavender. And while I do really like this ivory style cream model, I've got to say the green is my favourite on that one. And if you like taking your smartphone into a nice hot bubbly bath with you so you can catch up on your Netflix while soaking in suds or you just like checking your emails in the shower in the morning because you're so bloody busy, well either will do you because they're both IP68 water and dust resistant so they can be fully submerged in water as long as you don't just wander off and forget about them or anything. So let's move on to the software and while both of these blowers sport Android 13, the latest freshest version of Google's OS, it is in a very different form. With the Pixel you of course have virgin Android 13 untouched by another, whereas Samsung's Galaxy S23 Ultra uses Samsung's very own One UI 5.1 launcher. The overall layout is the same, you've got the Google Discover feed over here, you've got your apps tray for hiding away all of your goodies. If you drag down, you've got your notifications bar and of course all of your various toggles. But as you can see right here, One UI does change up the vibe of Android, changes up the design, the look and feel quite a lot. One of the big differences is that Samsung shoves a lot of its own apps and services onto its Galaxy smartphones, most of which just double up on stuff you'll already find in Android. So you've got your very own Samsung internet browser, just like Chrome. You've got the Bigsby Assistant, which overrules Google Assistant. Samsung Wallet, Samsung Health, Smart Things, all of these things are basically services you'll already find on Android. Of course, if you already use Samsung's apps and services, then you might be swayed, therefore, by the S23 Ultra. But personally, I find Google's Pixel smartphones a lot less cluttered, a lot more streamlined. And you'll find some fantastic Pixel exclusive features here on the 7 Pro that you definitely do not get on the S23 Ultra. The likes of the call screen and some invaluable tools that you really do miss when you move to another smartphone. On the flip side, of course, Samsung does offer some exclusive features of its own, like Samsung DeX. 
which allows you to hook up your S23 Ultra to a monitor or TV and basically use it as a makeshift PC. And also, yes, stuffed away in a bottom orifice here on the S23 Ultra is the S Pen Stylus, which is undeniably handy for scribbling on docs like PDFs before you share them around. And it is especially good for signing stuff that needs to be emailed urgently. I feel that more creative users would definitely get a lot of mileage out of the S Pen. It's really handy just having it stuffed there inside the actual smartphone, so, you know, you should hopefully never lose it. And both the S23 Ultra and also the Pixel 7 Pro have an in-display fingerprint sensor as well. But while it's an optical scanner here on the Pixel 7 Pro, it is a ultrasonic fingerprint sensor here on the S23 Ultra. They're both fast acting and generally dependable as well, but I have found that the S23 Ultra's fingerprint scanner does work better when your hands are a bit moist, a little bit damp, presumably because it takes a proper 3D image of your fingerprint rather than just a 2D image like the Pixel. And also both of these phones offer face recognition as a backup. Now both Samsung and Google take security very seriously and on top of a fantastic range of security tools and features, both of these phones sport a security core processor for storing your privates in a pleasingly encrypted and hard to access fashion. Fantastic privacy tools as well so you can check out exactly what your apps are up to, revoke their privileges if you want to. And when it comes to software and security updates, pretty much level peg in here as well, five years of security updates with both phones. Uh, five years of OS updates with the Pixel 7 Pro as well, whereas four years on the S23 Ultra. So still pretty bloody good. Most people want to keep their phones at least two or three years these days, and at least that's really helping. As for getting connected, well, you've got full eSIM support on both of these blows as well, as you'd expect from flagship smartphones in 2023. And the Galaxy S23 Ultra also has space for two physical SIM cards as opposed to just one on the Pixel 7 Pro, but no space on either of those for micro SD memory cards. You do have a choice of storage with both these blowers though. The Pixel 7 Pro offers between 128 gigs and 512 gigs if you've got a bit more cash lying around. You can actually double that on the S23 Ultra though. It starts off with 256 as base, all the way up to one terabyte if your stacks are really fat. Now, whichever almighty Android smartphone you choose, your eyes are in for an absolute treat because you've got a 6.7 inch OLED display here on the Pixel 7 Pro, 6.8 inch AMOLED display on the Samsung, slightly more advanced tech, but honestly, I found that kicking back with some Disney Plus, some Crunchyroll, whatever, my peepers were treated to some glorious, gorgeous visuals. You've got a Quad HD Plus resolution on both of these smartphones, so those images are pin sharp, despite the fact that these are gargantuan screens. Pleasingly sharp contrast, you've got HDR10 Plus video streaming support on both of them. No Dolby Vision support, sadly. But the colour reproduction can be perfectly natural, or you can boost it up a bit in the display settings if you prefer. And they both max out at 120Hz refresh as well, so creamy smooth navigating around through the desktops, all the various menus, etc. And for supported apps as well. You've got a stereo speaker set up on both the Galaxy S23 Ultra and the Pixel 7 Pro as well. But is one better than the other? Let's do a side-by-side -side comparison. First, the S23 Ultra. Hello, I'm Chris from Techspert and today we're going to be having a good hard gander at the Poco. We're having a good hard gander at a fresh new budget friendly smartphone, the Poco X5 Pro. It's essentially a rebranded, redesigned... And now the Pixel. Note 12 Pro Speed Edition, which never actually emerged here in Blighty, and sports very similar specs to the previous Poco X4 Pro, except the performance has been given a proper boot up the arse. Well, I've got to say, Samsung's blower definitely wins as far as volume is concerned. It's certainly louder on that top volume, so easier to hear in a noisier environment. However, I slightly prefer the audio output on the Pixel 7 Pro. Sounds slightly less tinny, a bit more beefy. And that's despite the fact you've got Dolby Atmos support here on Samsung's Galaxy S23 Ultra. You've also got an equalizer, so you can actually manually configure the audio output. Now, it's also a very different story when it comes to performance on this pair. Now, Samsung usually stuffs its very own Exynos chipsets into its S-series smartphones. At least it did here in Blighty. But for the S23 Ultra, it's gone with Qualcomm's Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 instead, which I'm really bloody happy about. Meanwhile, the Pixel 7 Pro uses the googly Samsung-y collaboration Tensor 2 chipset. And yes, it is mildly confusing that it is the Samsung chipset stuffed inside of the Pixel phone rather than the Samsung blower, but whatever. And if you do a bit of benchmarking side by side on these two blowers, as you can see, the Galaxy S23 Ultra is far superior, especially when it comes to that multi-core score. So multitasking is definitely the Galaxy's forte. 
Don't despair if you are tempted by the Pixel 7 Pro though, because I found that using it as my full-time everyday handset, the everyday running's been absolutely perfectly smooth. No apps crashing or juddering or any shenanigans like that. The Pixel 7 Pro can occasionally get a bit warm at times, although thankfully so far in my review model that hasn't affected the performance. Meanwhile the Galaxy S23 Ultra only gets a tiny bit toasty up towards the top end when you're using the camera lots or gaming for ages. Speaking of gaming, yeah this is definitely one area where the Galaxy is superior. My Pixel 7 Pro was a little bit juddery on the highest graphic settings on Genshin Impact when I first started playing it. It has improved over time but you'll still see the occasional bit of dropped frame rate. Despair. Thankfully the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 can ably handle any game you chuck at it, the likes of Genshin Impact again on those maxed out detail settings, perfectly fluid frame rate. So if you do count yourself as a power user, you are more demanding in general, you'd probably be swayed by the S23 Ultra rather than the Pixel. And both phones do offer a basic gaming mode as well, which you know prevents notifications from disturbing you for instance. You've got a few extra little tools here on the Pixel, including the ability to record your screen or live stream your gaming session. But what about the all-important subject of staying power? Well, both of these phones rock a 5000mAh capacity battery, but I have noticed a difference in the battery life between the two. I've used them both as my full-time smartphone now with my SIM card stuffed in there. I tend to average around sort of 6 hours of screen on time per day, lots of camera play, plenty of video streaming, audio streaming in the background when the screen is hibernating, etc. And I've found that the S23 Ultra tends to end a day with around 25-30% to battery life remaining, whereas on the Pixel 7 Pro it tends to be closer to 10-15%. to so either way, very happy with the performance indeed, but if you do find that you tend to have your smartphone glued to your hand pretty much all day long, then the S23 Ultra might be a safer bet. And why does it tend to last longer than the Pixel 7 Pro despite having the same size of battery? Well, it's almost certainly down to the energy efficiency of that Snapdragon chipset. And when they are ready for a recharge, well, not much in between them to be perfectly frank, 45 watt wide charging on the S23 Ultra versus 30 watt on the Pixel 7 Pro. And they both support wireless charging as well, that extra bit of flexibility. So let's finish up this mighty comparison with a squint at the camera tech. And what you've got on the Galaxy S23 Ultra is Samsung's 200 meg ISOCELL HP2 sensor versus a 50 meg OctaPD quad beer camera on the Pixel 7 Pro. In auto mode, you'll basically end up with the same size of photo on both of these handsets. The difference is you've got 16 in 1 pixel bidding on the S23 Ultra versus 4 in 1 on the Pixel. But what does this actually mean for the picture quality? Well, photo quality is very similar, but you will notice that the Galaxy S23 Ultra produces brighter pics overall, whereas photos taken with the Pixel tend to be closer to what you'll see with the naked eye. That said, the Pixel 7 Pro does have a slight edge with tonal accuracy, especially when it is bright out and when the S23 Ultra decides to boost more vivid colours just for jollies. Both cope admirably with pesky high contrast situations, avoiding the pitfall of overexposure almost every time, and even at night they aren't flummoxed by strong lighting. The pixel binning really comes into play in low light situations. The Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra tends to pump out sharper looking shots, albeit with a little bit more noise than the Pixel 7 Pro. Both phones definitely impress when it comes to the brightness levels, though the total accuracy is probably more in the Pixel's favour as the Galaxy tends to make things a bit warmer. And frankly, if I had to have one of these smartphones to use for the rest of my life as my full-time camera, I'd be happy with either because they're both flexible and they're both dependable. And as well as that primary sensor, both the Pixel 7 Pro and the S23 Ultra sport a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle shooter just to get a more pulled back view of the action and fit a bit more into frame. And here on the Pixel 7 Pro, you've actually got an autofocus there as well for macro shots. So if you're a fan of really close up snaps, then you might be tempted by that. As for the telephoto shooters, we've well, actually got dual 10 megapixel telephoto lenses on the S23 Ultra with 3x and 10x optical zoom, while the Pixel 7 Pro makes do with a single 48 megapixel telephoto shooter with a 5x optical zoom. That said, even though the Galaxy can max out at 100x combined zoom while the Pixel 7 Pro hits the ceiling at 30x zoom, there's not quite as much of a gap between them as you'd expect. At that 30 times level, the S23 Ultra does capture sharper, more detailed snaps, but the Pixel 7 Pro still impresses. So yeah, Google's Blower is still great for getting really nice, natural looking, unintrusive shots of your kids, your cats, whatever you want. You know, just doing what they're doing without getting right in their face with the smartphone. And of course, you have a variety of different camera modes on both of these blows, including a portrait mode, naturally. 
Both of these handsets can capture a good looking portrait snap on demand with the option of changing that bokeh effect in edit if you're not entirely satisfied. You've got a dedicated night mode on both as well, although both will automatically activate the night mode if it detects that the light is particularly cack. And a small other variety of modes here on the Pixel, but certainly the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra really goes to town. You've got the likes of the dedicated food mode, you've got the single take mode, which is a lot of fun if you do have kids or cats. And if you do like to have a bit more control, you've got a dedicated Pro mode here on the S23 Ultra, which you don't get on the Pixel 7 Pro, so you can manually fiddle about with the shutter speed, the EV levels, the white balance. And jumping back into the camera modes, you've also got Samsung's Expert Raw mode, which is great news if you like to edit your snaps on the fly with the likes of Lightroom. You can shoot either 12 or 50 megapixel images in RAW format. And then for your home movies, well, the Pixel 7 Pro maxes out at 4K resolution video at 30 or 60 frames per second, but the S23 Ultra can go all the way up to 8K res at 30 FPS if you fancy some of that. And that's while keeping things just as smooth with some very impressive stabilization. Both of these phones work well for home movies, especially as they have no trouble picking up audio in front of or behind the camera. That's an area where the S23 Ultra does seem to be slightly superior again in noisier environments. And the Ultra also occasionally offers a brighter picture in low light, although sometimes it does struggle to lock onto your subject as well. That focus can be a bit iffy. So certainly neither of these phones impresses as much as the Oppo Find X5 Pro. And then if you're a selfie fan, well, you've got a choice of a 12 megapixel selfie snapper here on the S23 Ultra, otherwise a 10.8er here on the Pixel 7 Pro. And both of these phones did a respectable job of capturing my skin tones or lack thereof. They don't seem particularly thrown by strong background lighting, although the Pixel 7 Pro is slightly more cack in lower light. So there you have it, kiddies. That's my side-by-side -side comparison of the Google Pixel 7 Pro and Samsung's mighty Galaxy S23 Ultra, two of the biggest Android flagships you can bag yourself right now in 2023. So which one are you more tempted by? It'd be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech and have yourselves a ruddy wonderful rest of the week. Cheers everyone, love you!